example, Basel has 50% of tax revenues from companies in Basel came from privileged uh, tax privileges uh, from, from mostly, uh, obviously, uh, pharmaceutical companies. So, in a way, if, if you, when you see what, what kind of economic policies uh, the local uh, the city government in Basel does, you can say, okay, they're not really social democrats, but on the, on the other hand, you, you can also, on the other hand, you can also say they don't really have much choice. It's just, uh, you know, it's very easy to blackmail them um, from the side of the companies just because of the basic structure of, of the economy in the city. So, yes. Thank you also. A political change, but uh, unfortunately for the moment it goes in the wrong direction, isn't it? Yes. But uh, I, from my side, I would mention another, another possibility that we from the NGO side, we have also to think about our coalitions. Because there are movements in Switzerland, for example, naming and shaming, there were movements to go to the house of, of Glenn Korshev and, and to denounce him uh, for his attitude as, as, as the chief of Glenco. But the NGOs stood behind all yeah. that movement. Yeah. So we have to rethink about, you know, about the coalition. We have to, 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 to make here in Switzerland on these issues. I think that is very important. I agree. First, first. Can I just compliment you on that? It's very short as a field of action and as an answer. Um, what you mentioned, um, to come back to the case of Zambia, beneficial ownership, the country by country reporting, is uh, a demand from Zambian civil society as well, um, which I think from a Zambian perspective is very, it's very radical. They, if they really manage to get that into law in Zambia, let's say there is beneficial ownership, all the companies which work in Zambia must show who is actually owning those companies. And which would go, go all the way to Switzerland and other places. So I think it would also be about supporting those initiatives in countries like Zambia and South Africa, these kind of international conditions. Okay. Thank you. I think the, the, the issue of transparency and to open the books, you know, this I think is extremely important. It's the most important issue. Uh, and. Uh, even more important, but it would be even more in, in the country like South Africa, you also have a lot of complicity in uh, state departments like uh, the Department of Mineral Resources, etc. where politicians and officials are shareholders in these uh, mining companies and they have no interests in MPs, etc. But I mean, uh, and that makes it very hard even to implement the progressive laws which are there in South Africa because there was a momentum after 1994 where a lot of good legislation was put in place but it's not implemented because of uh, so transparency and it would be so easy to make the whole house of cards just fall apart if you would open up the financial statements and you open up it. oh and it's always protected under the no it's because of competition we are hiding this from our companies but all your comp competitors are also doing the same thing you're not and I mean, London and all it. They all know everything. They know, they know everything about each other. They move staff from each other. Sometimes you work for Anglo American, then you go to. They know everything. So it's only to hide it from the public. So, and I, how to do that? I don't know. One thing to break it up is, of course, whistleblowing and things that Panama Papers comes up, etc., etc. And no, it's just, we have to pile scandal after scandal after scandal after scandal and finally it will be so embarrassing not to, you know, like that. No, this is an isolated case. Well, if you have 87 isolated cases, then perhaps uh, it's not cases, it's a structure, it's a, it's a way how to operate. Well, just a very small point, I guess, I mean, when we see how, how, how uh, the, the, the public reacted to Panama Papers in Switzerland, for example, you see also it, there is, I think scandal is okay, but there is also a, a really a big lack of political analysis which should actually follow um, these scandals. I mean, we were speaking about some Russian, I don't know, some Jewish uh, enterprise, uh, entrepreneurs actually, who kind of uh, uh, brought their money to, to Panama, but the specific role of Switzerland was also for me, like personally, to get to the media and actually I uh, see that, that as, a, as, a, as an opp opportunity to present our solutions in a way it was very, very hard. It's really, there is
is not much interest in the, in, the, in the broader public in Switzerland actually to come up with the specific political role or the economic role of Switzerland. So I think scandals is, is in a way not enough. And I guess people are also a bit tired of the scandals. Um, you, you saw that the last Bahamas papers, nobody was really interested in it. Thank you. I yeah, sorry, you sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, I think the work AIDC and UTIC and Tamara have done is an example of how it must uh, function in the future. And I think it's a very, very good example you gave us how this transparency could, uh, could act and could be used for a uh, political uh, policy we want to defend. And, but I think you also mentioned steps for transparency here in Switzerland, so I think that is one idea we take with you from uh, this panel here. So I thank you very much for staying with us. For